This video is sponsored by EssentialDeveloper.com by Kyo and Mike. They're offering a free course for iOS developers who want to master scalable architectural patterns and become one of the most wanted developers in the world. It's a three-day crash course, 100% online, where you'll take the first steps to work on large iOS projects, have a bigger impact, and consequently increase your salary. Many of Kyle and Mike's students at Essential Developer get jobs at large companies worldwide. During this free crash course, you can ask questions directly to Kyle and Mike, and as a bonus, you'll also have access to live mentoring sessions. The course is online, so you can follow the lessons from the comfort of your home. It's 100% free, so take advantage of this opportunity. If you want to become a real senior developer, this course can make all the difference in your career. The course is available for a short period of time, so visit EssentialDeveloper.com slash Afraz to secure your free spot now. In this video, we're going to learn how your view can react to view model changes in a iOS app. Particularly, we're going to be building a paradigm, a design pattern to react to things, what I'm going to go ahead and call bindings. So before we jump into things, drop a like down below. If you're interested in architecture, stay tuned since we are going to dive into it and hit subscribe if you're new here, let's jump in. So for today's video, we are gonna work in a playground, which for those of you unfamiliar, it's a way where we can just write out some quick Swift code and not actually have to create a whole project. So I'm gonna call this uh, project or play playground, I should say, simple bindings. And this is not to be confused with Swift UI bindings for those who are familiar. We're gonna build our own thing and I'll, I'll showcase what it is and why I call it binding. So essentially we want a way, so in theory, right, if we have a view, right, a UI component, we want it to be able to react automatically when our data changes, right? Be it in our view model from, you know, a network call, be it from an API request, be it from reading, you know, a database like core data, et cetera, et cetera. So let's add some comments here. We're gonna have our view model. I'm gonna stick it under here. We'll also have our view and we are going to have a simple binding up here. So this is pretty straightforward so far. So what we wanna do for our view model is we're gonna create a class view model that'll have an initializer simple enough and we'll create a view as well and this will you know traditionally inherit from ui view but you guys get the point i'll just make it a view for now and i'll also go and copy and paste this and create what i will call in this video a simple binding so good stuff so in our example today we want to react in our v we want to be able to listen to loading event changes so traditionally what you would do is you'll have a, uh, a variable in here, we'll make it private set, and essentially this will represent is loading, maybe it starts off as true, and our view here needs to be notified once you know our view model is done loading or fetching data or whatever operation it's doing. So there are a variety of ways you can actually be notified in the view. You can use a delegate pattern, a data source pattern, but all of them are a little verbose and kind of annoying, frankly. So we're gonna do this, spe this special binding thing up here. So the simple binding, we're gonna go ahead and make a generic where it takes in T and our initializer inside of here will take in a value of T optional. Now, if you're not familiar with generics, bear with me and I'll uh, explain them as we go. We are going to want to capture that value here and make it a uh, public var, and I'll go ahead and add value t, and we are going to add curlies here and say that whenever this value is written to, aka did set is called, we want to notify subscribers. In other words, anyone who cares to know that this value has changed, let them know that it's changed. So pretty simple so far. So down in our view model, instead of having this is loading be a simple bool, what we can actually do is we can say this is a simple binding. And if you open up the parentheses for our initializer, we'll pass in an initial value of, uh, let's do true. And what we can now do is inside of our view, we wanna have this view model. So I'll say let view model is a instance of our view model. And we want to know when our view model is basically, uh, you know, done loading. So we want to be able to say, hey, view model is loading. 
dot listen or something to that tune. So what I'll initially do is I will print out is loading and we'll get the actual value by saying is loading dot value. Now keep in mind that this is a optional, the value here, so it is gonna yell at me. So we do need to say print out string describing this. And we are going to also print this out momentarily afterwards just to make sure that we get the is loading value changed. So let me just fix up my parentheses here since it looks like I screwed them up. So let me just fix that. All right, I think we are in good shape here. And let's actually figure out how we can listen to simple binding changes. So the way we're gonna to listen to them is by adding a, a function in here. We're gonna say public func, and maybe we'll just call it listen. And essentially we'll take in a block. This will be escaping, taking in no arguments and returning no arguments. We're just gonna capture these blocks. So we'll say blocks.append block. Now we need an array of closures, so I'll say private var blocks will be a array of closures, which is basically just a function if you're very unfamiliar with closures. And whenever the value is written to, aka did set is called, what we'll do is say uh, blocks for each, basically loop over all of our blocks and we'll just call the block. And here we'll say block in basically akin to a for loop. So that's actually all of the simple binding does, and it's really powerful what you can do with a very small amount of code. Now every single place where you have a thing, a piece of data that can change, instead of using, in this case, a Boolean directly, you can make it reactive by saying it's a simple binding. And here in our view, what I can go and do now is I can say view model that is loading that listen. And whenever we you know, write to this is loading property, we are going to go ahead and call the blocks that are listening. So I'm gonna move our print statement here into the uh, block here. So it'll get printed whenever the did set is written to. And what I'll also do here is I will say view model dot start loading just as an example function here and start loading what that'll do is you know traditionally in this function you would make an api call so you would call your api here but in our case we'll just say dispatch queue global and what we'll do is uh, let's do let's see the main queue so we'll say dispatch queue dot main and then i will say async after now plus maybe three seconds we want to execute something and what we're going to execute is we'll just say hey set the value of loading to false so basically our api call is done and let's give this a run so the way that we will run our playground is as follows we're going to open up the console which is down here you can use command shift y to open it I'll just drag it up so we can see it a little better. And actually nothing is gonna happen at the moment because we need to instantiate this view. So I'll come down here and say let my view is an instance of our view. And when our initializer is called, we will indeed uh, come and execute all this logic here. This is yelling at me because we are in a closure so we should capture self. We're not gonna worry about any retain cycles. Let's hit the little play button here and let's see what happens. So by by default, it's saying is loading op is a optional and it's a value true. And three seconds later, we get, well, is loading is now false. So in our actual application, what you would go ahead and do is, you know, at this point in our view, we can say, hey, hide the spinner or refresh our table view or what have you, right? Now we have a mechanism, this simple binding, which is incredibly scalable to build out reusable properties in our view model such that we can react in our view to data changes. Like I said, this is loading is the canonical example that I think is the easiest to follow, but you can use this in a variety of applications, right? So let's say you have a user profile and the screen displays your first name, last name, username. And let's say the user changes all this information, it's editable. When it changes, you don't wanna to have to implement a delegate or keep you know, polling to see if the data's changed. You just wanna know once it's changed. So this is also known as the pub sub model, pub, 
uh, publisher and subscriber. It's also you know somewhat used in RX Swift and RX Coco. So you might have seen this pattern in a variety of other ways. The reason I really like this particular way is because it's clean vanilla Swift, no outside packages. Uh, etc etc so that's a good segue to the end of the video this video is indeed sponsored by essential developer so if you guys are looking to master scalable architecture become a true senior developer there is a three-day crash course totally free link in the description down below thanks again to essential developer for sponsoring the video i will see you guys in the next one